greatness. And by this many become defiled. I'm sure you don't want to become defiled, but I'm pretty sure you have been on several occasions. What are you going to do about that? Is there anything you can do about that? You stay tuned. I'll tell you that there is. And then it says something I don't understand. Unless there be any fornication or profane person like Esau. Well, Esau was out in the fields and walking and exerting himself. And he was hungry and he came home. And his brother had made a stew. And it looked good and smelled good to Esau. And he was very hungry. And his brother says, you can't have any unless you sell your birthright. Which means that Esau was the firstborn. And he had the birthright. And so he gave it to uh, his brother. Well, have you done anything like that? And Esau regretted this all the rest of his life. And he tried to get it back. He tried to get his father to give it back to him. And his father didn't. Well, let me read you what this passage says. Who, for one morsel of food, sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. That's by his father. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Now let's go over to what David Rumpus says in Our Daily Bread. David Roper expresses his pellucidly. You can see the whole thing. You can see right through to the bottom of it. And I ask you what David Roper asks us. Have we sold out? Have you sold out, folks? The way Esau did? Has the lure of wealth caused you to sell out, folks? Has it? The lure of power? The lure of prestige? The lure of position? We know it has from the judges and the courts and the lawyers and the clerks. We know that. Has it for you? I think probably. Have we sold out to security? style or the approval and praise of others has that led us to barter away God's riches for a single meal I believe we have more than once Do you regret it? I do. Esau sought to change his father's mind and gain the inheritance that he had forfeited by his duplicity. But he could not set right the damage that he had done. He had to live with his decision. Now neither can we, you and I, turn back the clock and undo the wrong that we have done to ourselves and to others. But wait, wait. Although the past is irrevocable, there can be a new day before us, filled 
with new chances, new opportunities, and new expectations. Now God will not redo the past for you, but when we repent, He can and will forgive us and set us on a new path. Do you get the drift? So we've done wrong in the past. We've shamed ourselves. We've shamed others. We can't do it over. But what is there? In the present, there's a new opportunity. A new chance. A new start. All we have to do, and that's no problem, I don't think, for you, is to repent. Admit it, say, I'm sorry, I wish I hadn't done it, I'll take my punishment, and I'm going to start over, and I'm going to do things right. Isn't that a nice thing? Now the Lord can give us opportunities to show how we have truly repented of the decisions. And I'll repent for mine right now. I'm sorry for all the wrong decisions I made. I'm sorry for all the wrong I ever did. I'm sorry for any hurt that I ever made. I'm sorry for any shame. Uh, they make me feel bad all over. Uh, I wish I hadn't done them. And uh, I'm not going to do anything like that anymore. And I will take the blame. I will take the uh, hit. So the Lord can give us opportunities to show how we have truly repented of the decisions of the past and how much we long to serve God with decisions to come. And I think that first decision, folks, is what I've been saying over and over again, ad infinitum. The first decision is spend your time with God. The first thing when you get up in the morning. You count your blessings. You're able to get out of bed. You're able to walk. You're able to see. You're able to go to the bathroom. And your body's functioning. And then... I would sing a hymn if I were you. The one I sing is Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty Early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee Holy, Holy, Holy Merciful and Mighty and Don't you forget that. God in three persons Blessed Trinity. And one of those persons is the Holy Spirit. Keep that going. Keep that in your heart. No matter what you're doing or with whom you may be. God will never mention the deeds by which we've shamed others and ourselves they are forgiven and forgotten forever that's amnesty an act of sovereign power granting oblivion a general pardon for past X amnesty maybe amnesia isn't such a bad thing amnesia is loss of memory due to brain injury shock uh, 
repression. But no, that's not the way to do it, is it? Last paragraph. David Roper, I told you, wrote this. Roper. R-O-P-E-R. God will give us a place to begin again. To love, to serve, to touch others profoundly and eternally for His sake. I've got to do that. I got to do it. I know it, and I'm physically able and I'm mentally able to share it. And I've got to do more of that. And that's what I'm doing with you right now, because more than anything, I want you to be happy. And I know what makes you happy. This demonstration. This demonstrates the greatness of our Heavenly Father's forgiving love to us. David Roper. I wonder if David knows the joke about the three ropes who were walking down the street. They went into the restaurant and they started to order and the head waiter says, Aren't you a rope? We don't serve ropes in here. You have to leave. And out on the sidewalk, one rope got furious. And he tied himself into a knot. And he tossed both of his ends. He went back into the restaurant. He's ordering. The head waiter said, Aren't you a rope? And he said, I'm afraid not. Now here's a hymn written by Dennis DeHaan. It was the DeHaan family who started the radio Bible class. And they put out these magnificent devotionals every month. Says Dennis DeHaan, and I don't know what the music is to it. Dear Lord, be merciful to me. My sin has grieved your heart. That's a good way to start, folks. Admit it. Say you're sorry. And grant to me your strength anew. That's what you need, the strength. And how do you get it? Through your thought. Through doing good things for people. For praying for people. Through going to church. To make a fresh new start. God's forgiveness is the door to a new beginning. One of the easiest ways to pray is to sing a hymn. That's one of the easiest prayers. What hymn will I sing you? I should have a pitch pipe and get off on the right pitch. Uh, May thy rich grace impart to my fainting heart, my zeal inspire. Now hear us while we pray. Take all our guilt away. Oh, let us from this day be holy. Amen. So be it. Solemnly ratified. Did you have a good time? Let's see. You and I prayed for... What was it? 20 minutes? Folks, this is announcement time. Did you ever take a look at this year's calendar? And did you ever say, Look what God gave me. Look at all those days that God gave me. Is it all right with you folks if I let Amadeus in? He's he's out there scratching the screen and rubbing his hands on the door window. Amadeus, you come in, okay? And talk to the people and show them how handsome you are. And don't make a whole lot of noise. Refrigerated door is open because it's defrosting. 
You knew about the three snowmen, didn't you? Herb and Bill and John. And John said to Bill, You know something? I haven't seen our friend Herb around lately. Have you? And Bill says, No, I haven't. Not since he left for Florida. This is a funny thing that happened. St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Belatia, New York has a Tuesday night outreach. And they serve a free meal and it's very good and it's very well served. Uh, it's like the Crown Plaza. And uh, to the poor people. And every week a different church uh, prepares the meal. And three weeks ago it was the Christian Community Church. And they have just lost their minister. His name is George Isley, and he was very well beloved. And as the woman is dishing up my macaroni, the woman from the uh, Christian Community Church, uh, let me insert that simultaneously we at the Kinderhook Reformed Church lost our minister. He abandoned us and he went out to near Grand Rapids. And so I was bereaving about that and uh, I said to this woman from the Christian church dishing out my macaroni, I said, uh, we lost our minister. And she says, no, he went to heaven. And I said, no, he went to Michigan. Two hats were hanging on a hook and one says, I'm going to hang out here for a while. And he says to the other one, you go out and get ahead. Fresh out of college, the young man has everything needed to be a success in the business world. Rich parents. What do you call fake spaghetti, folks? Fake spaghetti. The great imposter. Everything at Cablevision is insured. Everything in the offices is insured. Except the clocks. The employees keep a watch on that. And Cablevision has found something that will do the work of five men. What is that? One woman. The judge is a mature thinker. All of his ideas are 30 years old. A man bought a calculator with a built-in memory and he turned it on and the calculator said, what about yesterday when you were trying to balance your checking account and you slammed me down on the table? The family this summer is sending the children to the most reliable and least expensive summer camp there is and that's called Camp Grandma and a boy at camp said that the swim instructor was sent we got sick and they sent the golf pro over to substitute and the boy said I almost drowned. He kept saying, keep your head down. And the father picked up his son at summer camp and he said to his son, did you, any of the kids get lonesome, homesick? And his son said, yeah, some of them, the ones who have dogs. And Bob and Joan are going to try something new this summer. They're going to send the dog to summer camp and send the kids to obedience school. You know, folks, with all of the gadgets that they put on cars today, why can't they invent a windshield wiper that will not hold a parking ticket. 
This is Glendora, a cheerful look at life. Brought to you by...
These are all announcements for you. Do you have any announcements? A chat with Lindor will help you with your announcements. This is a very little announcement. A little tiny announcement. This is from Victoria Carezzi, Director of Programming, Manhattan Neighborhood Network, Public Access for the borough of Manhattan in New York City. And she says, oh, words for your refrigerator door. And uh, the refrigerator, by the way, is being defrosted. But then one was eat, <laughs> one was joy, <laughs> and the other was love. See, is there any other little announcements? This is interesting. My friend Patricia Brady in Staten Island, who keeps a chat with Glendora on TV out there, along with a Jason and uh, Jason's new assistant Lauren. She went to Mexico. She is a geologist. She is an astronomer, and they studied ge. She and a friend of hers studied geology there. And she always sends me a postcard when she goes to Grand Teton and when she goes to Oregon and Montana and Wyoming in the summertime or the southeast, southwest, she sends me a postcard. Thank you, Patricia Brady, our grand public access champion. Thank you, Great Neck, Shirley Bruno, Sandy Ferguson. The chat with Glendora is on TV in Great Neck, as you see. Saturdays at 10.30 p.m. and Thursdays at 2 p.m. on Channel 20. That's a decent channel, uh, Cable Beaver. Thank you. It's much better than your Channel 76 and so many other cable vision systems throughout Westchester. This is Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Victoria Caressi was the designer of this new logo. And she has sent the labels. The labels are beyond my ability to read. But how they ever do it, something like 1,400 public access programs. And they send out 1,400 of these. Give them applause, would you please, folks? And then, we all have a barcode. Or each of us has a barcode. And then, how they do this is a miracle. Another miracle of God, they send you the schedule for the next 13 weeks. Amazing Grace. Hail Mary. Public access in Buffalo, the south towns, the surrounding towns of the municipality, the city of Buffalo, is handled by Rick Carnot, and he's been doing it 26 years. And you know, that makes me think. I've been doing public access. 36 years.
and all Rick wants to do now is retire. And he has 45 municipalities.